Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening to everybody. My name is Hung Shur. I'm coming to you from the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, to together with you look into Guanyin Bodhisattva's Universal Doorway, Universal Gateway, Universal Door Chapter of the Lotus Sutra. All right. Uh, at today, we have Paul Kong going to help us request Dharma, and I'm going to ring my handbell, and when I ring it, I'm going to do a half bow right here from my chair. So I invite you all to join me if you'd care to do so. Here we go. Here's the first slide. Paul, we're ready. Anytime you want to start. Okay, Dhamma Master. Gong Ching Ba De Song Ping. Wei 苏正无声。Will the Sangha with great virtue out of compassion for the sake of this assembly and all living beings please turn the wonderful Dharma will to teach us how to live suffering and attain bliss and end birth and death and quickly realize number. Amo Tasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambudasa Namo Tasa Bhagavato Arahato to Sama Sambhutasa. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Sadanto Suche Doye Ulahudi San Miao San Putoshe. Namo Satando Suchedoye Alahati Sanyao Sanputoshe. 
无上甚深微妙法，百千万劫难遭遇。我今见闻得受持，愿结如来真实意。Supreme and wondrous Dharma, subtle and profound, rarely is encountered throughout billions of eons. But now we see it, hear it, and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. All right. Thank you, Paul, for the Dharma request. We are well and truly requested. Today, our new sutra lecture, sutra lecture text, is has been improved and updated by our volunteer staff. All right. Um, before we get started, look at how cold it is outside. This is a goofy Laura Keat who came with his partner yesterday. And I was impressed at how fluffy he looked. As they say in Australia, he's all rugged up for the winter. And he's like, hi, it's nippy, mate. Yeah, we like it. Yep. Here's a uh, Another one of those winter birds. And he cute. This is Candace, the kookaburra, who comes every day. And something, we're missing her brother. Don't know what happened to her brother. Haven't seen him for a while. Hope he's okay. One more, just to get us going here, to kind of ground us in the weather. This is a winter turkey. How do you like this awesome turkey? We, uh, because we keep shoveling the bird seed into the feeding dish. So these turkeys, this has become the popular stop for every turkey in the neighborhood. And we converse with them. And of the group of about eight who now hang out here, there's one, one only, who is completely unafraid and just stands right there and waits for me to, to uh, refill the bowl. And that's, that's him, this is him. All right, now today we have something very special. Um, we're gonna start right here and I'll just read the text, okay? We're gonna read down to here from here. So it's pretty much one page. All right, I'll just go right through. Um, somebody mentioned that, let's see here, there's no full screen options. So I'll just make it bigger. There we go. Okay, here we go. Ruo yo nu ren, shu yu qiu nan, li bai. Gongyangshi 观世音菩萨名号 If women seeking sons bow to and make offering to the Bodhisattva Guanshiyin, they will give birth to sons happy, virtuous, and wise. If instead they wish for daughters, they will bear gifted daughters with deep-rooted, wholesome characters, beloved and respected by all. Infinite resolve, such is the power of of the Bodhisattva who listens to the sounds of all the world. Here it is, that's today's section. Uh, if you listening in today are mother of a child, if you will become the mother of a child, um, then I put my palms together to you and admit that I have never given birth to a child and won't 
in the near future. Uh, so I don't have this experience, but every one of us listening on the call today, and we have people from five continents, <laughs> everyone listening on the call today has, uh, has a mother and came to life because of the experience of giving birth. And that is, I can make that statement categorically, right? Without fear of contradiction. Unless maybe you are a deva or a dragon or one of the eightfold pantheon here to protect. If so, welcome, welcome. I don't know what experience you went through to come to life, but uh, we all come because of mothers and that experience of seeking a child, conceiving a child, giving birth to a child, and then watching the child grow and sometimes sadly pass away before the parents or normally outlive the parents, go on to serve the parents. That entire experience of our species uh, reproduction is magical and deeply, deeply, what's, we need to get a good word, a quality, a quality word here. Magical in that it defies science Predicting gender is an inexact practice. You don't know who's coming. And when we get clues from people like Master Hua, um, it becomes even more um, non-scientific. How, how do you say? Knowable, but not predictable. Um, Shifu would talk about uh, you know, I'm ahead of myself. You know what we have to do? Ah, I'm, I apologize. As someone who has the blessing to explain sutras as part of my weekly practice, I should use my discipline, use my technique, use the fa, the dharma. Okay, what does the fa, the method say? It says, after you recite the text, go through it first linguistically, go through it first and look at the language. And I, I didn't do that. I jumped right into the interpretation. So let me go back and look at the language here. We are in the Fahajing, the Dharma Flower Sutra, known as the Lotus. And we're in the section where Guanyin Bodhisattva, um, the Guanyin's incredible benefits to people who uh, revere Guan Yin and keep her name in mind, it says, uh, recall the strength of Guan Yin Bodhisattva. People who do that, who recite Namo Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva, can have amazing things happen that are unavailable to people who don't recite the name of Guan Yin, right? So today we have two of those results, two of those benefits. One is, if women and men, if mothers and fathers seek sons and maybe are unable to conceive, maybe, or for various reasons uh, are unable to conceive, if they bow to and make offerings to the Bodhisattva Guan Yin, Guan Yin's promise, the Lotus Sutra's promise is they will give birth to sons, happy, virtuous, and wise. Further, if they wish for daughters, and I love that part because this is not a male-centric sutra or a male-centric religion, right? So suppose a couple wants a daughter if they bow to and make offerings to the Bodhisattva Guan Yin, they will bear gifted daughters with deep rooted, wholesome character, beloved and respected by all. And just looking at the text here, what is cool is the Sutra not only says, oh, children come in two flavors, <laughs> human children, boys and girls. And if you want a boy, you want a boy who is happy, virtuous, and wise. What could be better than to have a son who is happy, virtuous, and wise? Oh, 
And Chinese mothers around the world say, and rich. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Gonna be a lawyer, gonna be a doctor. Yeah, all right. So we know that. So. But even if they weren't rich lawyers, doctors, and they were happy, virtuous, and wise, every mother I know would go, okay, I'll take that. I'll settle for that. Right? Good enough. And, and the sutra describes for us, likewise, the qualities desirable in a daughter. And look at what the, the, of all the things that your kids could be, the sutra gives us three things they could be that it says are what you want in a daughter. What is it? Gifted, deep-rooted, wholesome characters, beloved and respected by all. Yeah, they're gifted, meaning what? Oh, well, you know, love to serve. What a gift if a child is shown by their parent, by her parents, how to serve, how to be, how to live in service and the joy that that brings. That would be gift, a gift, right? And filial, yeah. A daughter who looks upwards in her relationship to her parents and sidewards in her relationship to her siblings. That would be a gift, right? But deep-rooted, wholesome character. Wow. Someone who is kind. Someone who is resourceful, sensitive, thoughtful, right? That's all wholesome character. And as a result of her gifts and character, she is beloved and respected. Would you take a daughter like that? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Notice it doesn't say anything about physical appearance, right? It talks about inner qualities. And then the sutra has a little refrain here. Notice above with the three poisons, there was a refrain at the end. And it said, Guan Yin Bodhisattva, with magnificent spiritual power, gives benefits like these. So always keep her name in your heart and hold her name in mind. And when it was the seven dangers, it had a refrain. Infinite resolve. How imposing is the awesome spiritual power of this great Bodhisattva who listened to the sounds of all the world. So we've had seven dangers three poisons, and now two requests. And each one concludes, each one of these little sections of the sutra concludes with the exhortation to keep Guan Yin in our hearts and hold her name in mind. Okay, there we go. So now this promise um, doesn't, doesn't defy you know, biology, it doesn't say if you're 50 years old uh, and you decide at age 50 that it's time to have a child, then everything's going to go smoothly, right? No, this is still, biology still plays a part here. But the promise of being able through spiritual means, through your devotion, through your cultivation, that you are able to bring about child, uh, childbirth, and have happy, virtuous, and wise boys and gifted, deep-rootedly wholesome daughters. Um, that's pretty amazing, pretty wonderful, right? Um, I know uh, reading in, excuse me, hit my cough button here so I can blow my nose. I've got a nifty mic with a cough button. So I don't cough in your ears. Um, the, uh, I was reading in a, uh, was it, I guess it was the medicine master sutra, medicine Buddha sutra about what, uh, folk practices, folk beliefs that, that, uh, exist in the Chinese community, the wider Chinese community. And the, the medicine Buddha, the medicine sutra was saying, uh, don't do this. Don't go to trees and chō shenling, right? Don't go to a tree and seek a tree spirit to give you a child if you're unable to conceive. And who knew, right? I, I live, I'm an urban 
kid, pretty much. I grew up in a city, didn't grow up on the, in the farm. And so I wasn't aware that there was a practice so common that it made it into the sutra um, of certain trees being considered fertility trees. And if you go tie a ribbon onto the tree and do whatever, and often those folk beliefs involve making a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice. You kill something and offer it to the tree in order to get pregnant. And mm -mm, I've, it's enough, it's common enough that it made it into the sutra. So <laughs> sutra says, don't do that. Don't do that. No, just the, the uh, instead, you know, use your energy properly on Guan Shi and Bodhisattva. Okay. Restore Bodhisattva talks about it. Medicine Buddha talks about it. Guanyin Bodhisattva, Pumampin, here in the Lotus Sutra, talks about devotion and faith are the ways to uh, create the situation so that natural things can happen. Right. Now, um, Shrupa would talk about it in so many different ways. Okay, here I am. Now I'm back in my interpretation part. All right, that's, that's the method. That's our technique. And the things that Shrupa would say about uh, childbirth were just uh, mind-boggling, right? Shrupa would say such things as um, we have affinities with each other that are sometimes very wholesome, that we come to repay kindness. Right? And then sometimes he would say, no, we come to repay debts. We, the, the, child, the child has been waiting for you so that you can continue your enmity relationship, right? Sometimes he would say that um, to explain human relationships in this life, right? So in other words, Deeds from the past carry over and we continue. Um, sometimes he would say that uh, even though you had an affinity with somebody from the past, because somebody cultivated and recited properly, recited sutras, bowed to Guan Yin, just like the sutra says, um, things changed and your virtue attracted another soul who came to your womb and was born and became a child right now i'm i'm way over my head here this is this is above my pay grade i don't see these things but sure who did and uh described all the amazing amazing relationships that can result in a child coming to live with parents Right. So, yeah, this is the, the biology, spiritual biology. That's what we're looking at. Right. And it is inconceivable. That is to say, beyond understanding, but real, real, real. You know, think of all that goes into raising a child. And that all begins with, uh, having that uh that eighth consciousness that's the language we use the the soul the spirit of the child show up uh in your womb and nine months later arrive in body embodiment of your wishes and all the mischief starts <laughs> yeah. so how wonderful infinite resolve such is the power of the bodhisattva who listens to the sounds of all the world Okay, furthermore, any living being who worships and makes offerings to Guanyin Bodhisattva, Gong Butang Juan, will never take a loss. Therefore, every single living being should hold Guan Shi and Bodhisattva's name in mind. Shri Gu Zhong Sheng Jie Ying Shou Shi Guan Shi and Pusang Indeed, indeed. Okay, now I'm going to park that down below and tell a story. Now, uh, to tell the story, I'm going to stop 
sharing my screen briefly because there we go. Now it's okay, still here, but in telling the story, um, this I have permission from the person who the story occurred to to retell it. But I want to be sensitive to the fact that this is a international call. I'm going to use my Dharma friend's Dharma name to tell this story. And uh, just to keep it, those, those who know her will know who it is. If you don't know her, you won't. You'll know her from her spiritual identity, her relationship to Master Hua. So this person's name is Guo Tong, and her husband's name is Guo Tong, Tong and Tong, first tone, second tone, two tones. And she was a nurse in San Francisco's busiest uh, maternity ward, the busiest hospital maternity ward in San Francisco, an RN, right? So professional person involved in giving, bringing people into the world, right? She saw her own OBGYN doctor every single day at work. And she knew everything about pregnancy and birthing babies that there was to know and was indeed involved in bringing so many people into the world. And she was a disciple. She had, had met Master Hua, she and her husband uh, had uh, co connections with Shifu and before uh, Buddhist Lecture Hall in Waverly Place, back, back in the uh, house in the Fillmore, right? She knew Master Hua and uh, The, they got married uh, at Gold, let's see, later on at Gold Mountain, I believe, or was it a Buddhist lecture hall? Anyway, they had a Buddhist wedding. They were married and wanted to start a family and couldn't. There's the pinch, right? Couldn't, couldn't get pregnant. And her, uh, Guotong's uh, doctor, who was professionally involved in bringing in making sure that women who wanted to start a family could do so safely. And he said, sorry, friend. <laughs> so that was the kind of the story. And at this time, in the, this time, at this point, it was Gold Mountain. In the Gold Mountain community, uh, people had begun reciting the Universal Door chapter, Universal Gateway chapter, the Puman Pin, of the Lotus Sutra, and they knew the story of Guanyin Bodhisattva, and they heard Shifu explain it. And so Shifu instructed Gotong to recite. He said, just recite the name of Guanyin Bodhisattva, and don't worry. And so... <laughs> I remember hearing the conversation or hearing about the conversation and, and uh, Guotong went and said, you know, sure, oh, sure oh, we want a family, but we can't get, can't get pregnant. Huh, you don't have enough faith. Just recite Guanyin's name. Huh, really cultivate, be really sincere. And so she did. She, both she and her husband. And a year or two went by and <laughs> what happened? Well, Guotong was a vegetarian before she actually met Shifu and had been eating a strict vegetarian diet, which is pretty uncommon among ordinary American young people back in the 60s. But she was vegetarian and she had a strong desire to eat meat. It's just as a vegetarian, suddenly craving to eat meat. It came up in her mind. And so what did she was feeling, you know, still not pregnant, reciting the Buddha's name and had this craving for meat. And she went home one day after work and the phone rang and on the phone was Shifu, Master Hua, calling her personal phone at home 
And he said, he'd heard that she was having problems. And what's going on? So Guo Tong said, Shifu, I'm having a strange craving to eat meat, but I haven't eaten any. And there was this long silence on the phone. And he started laughing. And he said, while laughing, ah, now you have baby. Everything okay. No meat. He said. And sure enough, she was able, she had conceived the child. All right. So I'm going to share my screen again because we're back. All right. So, okay. Well, things are going along. And uh, Guatong goes in for a checkup. And her doctor says, oh, trouble, trouble. There's going to be difficulties. Just looking at your makeup here, your physical condition, we, this is really a question whether this child will be born safely or not. So you have some decisions to make, he said. So uh, Guotong went back to Shifu and said, Shifu, Shifu, what do I do? Shifu said, hmm, you just don't have enough faith. He said, you should be really sincere. No worries, no problems. So Guotong, uh, the this, this story now was known to the community. And I remember people saying, yeah, we, we decided we were going to pitch in. And uh, we made images of Guan Yin. And uh, we recited with Guotong on her behalf to make sure that things went smoothly. So now the community was involved and people were aware that this was, uh, this was a big deal. It was about, you know, cause why we, nobody knew anything about reciting Guan Yin Bodhisattva and, and having cravings for meat and that, you know, you could seek a child and have a child like this. And so the time came and Gotong was in the hospital and nine months, a time to give birth. And her friends, her Dharma friends from Gold Mountain, and I heard this from several people, were gathered outside in the hallway and they saw uh, Gotong wheeled in on the gurney and they were all outside reciting and reciting and what's going to happen what's going to happen is it going to be a safe birth it's all going to be well and they're reciting and someone described this the scene the uh the doors to the maternity ward open and she's wheeled out and they said on her face was this beatific look this blissful look on her face and what happened, what happened, what happened? She said, sweet dew. <laughs> and there was the sound of a cry. And she gave birth to a whopping child with red hair, a boy. <laughs> People who know him, yeah. It's larger than the average baby, right? And she, they, everybody gathered in her room once she, she came to and said, what was, what was going on? What happened? And she said, I was worried at the start, but I kept reciting and I opened my eyes and at the foot of my bed was Guan Yin Bodhisattva. And I felt this cool liquid touch the crown of my head and it felt so good. And I knew there was no need to worry. She said, that's my story. <laughs> and Yes, so that entire experience happened a second time, and Guotong and Guotong have two very healthy boys in their family, two sons, starting from uh, can't conceive, right? Oh my, how about that? So, and of course, Shifu was like, hmm, you all really don't believe you have to be more sincere really cultivate the way 
So infinite resolve, such is the power of the Bodhisattva who listens to the sounds of all the world. Any living being who worships and makes offerings to Guanyin Bodhisattva will never take a loss. Therefore, every single living being should hold Guanxi and Bodhisattva's name in mind. Says the Sutra. How about that? So that's uh, my own experience. And I appreciate Gautam giving me permission to uh, tell the story. I hope I got the details right. And maybe I, maybe I didn't, uh, but she'll correct me. And uh, I want those details to be accurate because that's a, a moving, powerful story. I was on Three Steps, One Bow, bowing to the City of 10,000 Buddhas, and times were tough. Uh, we were going through, I believe it was Half Moon Bay at this point. They're on the peninsula. And we were um, not greeted as uh, pil pilgrims or heroes. We were greeted as um, with beer and tomatoes and shouts and lots of nastiness at that point. That's our karmic response, certainly. And in order to keep myself bowing uh, when times were tough, I was uh, thinking of Guanyin Bodhisattva and uh, all the things that I knew. And I put it together in a song Homage to the Bodhisattva Guan Shi Yin, which I recited to get me through, honestly, its strength. So, homage to the Bodhisattva Guan Shi Yin, who's made a vow to save us from the troubles that we're in. Although she travels far and wide to save all as she roams, 10,000 Buddha city is the Bodhisattva's home. The Shifu said that Guan Yin Bodhisattva left Putoshan and lives at Wan Po Chan. Homage to the Bodhisattva Guan Shi Yin, bringing joy and ending sorrow, say her name again. Homage to the great Dharani, the, the Dabe Jo, right? The great compassion mantra. Holy magic spell, healing sickness, stopping evil, lucky as you will. And the chorus goes, Namo Guan Shi Yin Pusa, Namo Guan Shi Yin. Uh, I would say Bodhisattva, but it doesn't fit the meter. Namo Guan Shi Yin Pusa, Namo Guan Shi Yin. Namo Bodhisattva who observes the world sounds. Everywhere your name is heard, happiness abounds. Con contemplating freedom, that's Guan Zizai. Compassionate and kind. Saving all from suffering and bringing peace of mind. Namo, great compassion mantra, holy magic spell. Power inconceivable for those who hold it well. Miracles more wonderful than words can ever tell. Chant the mantra's ancient sounds and trouble you dispel. Namo Guan Shi Yin Pusa, Namo Guan Shi Yin. <coughs> Known by many different names in many different lands, Guan, Bodhisattva Guan Shi Yin with a thousand hands, a thousand eyes, a thousand ears, respond to those in need. Recite the name of Guan Shi Yin, from troubles you'll be freed. In Transformations 32, she reveals her light, manifesting different bodies when the time is right. Now, in, now appearing as a beggar, solving someone's plight. Now appearing as a king with awesome royal might. Now a monk, now a maiden, now a nobleman. Teaching in a way each different being can understand. Compassionately bringing joy and ending suffering. That's the greatness of the Bodhisattva Guan Shi Yin. Okay, that's the song. Namo Guan Shi Yin 
homage to the Bodhisattva Guan Shu Yin, who's made a vow to save us from the troubles that we're in. Although she travels far and wide, save all as she roams, Ten Thousand Buddha City is the Bodhisattva's home. Homage to the Bodhisattva Guan Shu Yin. Bringing joy and ending sorrow, say her name again. Homage to the great Dharani, holy magic spell. Healing sickness, stopping evil, lucky as you will. Bodhisattva who observes the world sounds. Everywhere your name is heard, happiness abounds. Contemplating freedom, compassionate and kind. Saving all from suffering and bringing peace of mind. Namo great compassion mantra, holy magic spell. Power inconceivable for those who hold it well. Miracles more wonderful words can ever tell chant the mantras ancient sounds and troubles you dispel Many different names, many different lands. Bodhisattva Guan Shu Yin with a thousand hands. A thousand eyes, a thousand ears respond to those in need. Recite the name of Guan Shu Yin from troubles, you'll be free. In Transformations 32, she reveals her light, manifesting different bodies when the time is right. Now appearing as a beggar, solving someone's plight. Now appearing as a king with awesome royal might. Now a monk, now a maiden, now a noble man. Teaching in a way each different being can understand. Compassionately bringing joy, ending suffering. That's the greatness of the Bodhisattva Guan Shu Yin. You want to join me? Last time, here we go. to the Bodhisattva song. Thank you. 
Stay healthy, stay peaceful, keep reciting Guanyin Bodhisattva's name. See you all next week, everyone. Omitofu. Bye for now.